welcome viewer to our program The Riser and uh, it's always our pleasure to share the word of God with you. It's always the pleasure even of heaven when we gather together to share the word of God for we are told where two or three are gathered together Christ himself and it's a promise that Christ himself has said he will be with us. May we look on our study today and the topic of our study today is go G O go shall we pray before we read Father what in heaven thank you Lord for your care thank you for the free gift of life thank you for Jesus Christ who died for us and is still interceding for us in the most holy place to prepare us to fit heaven, to prepare us to enter into heaven. Today, as we study your word, as we read your word, guide us, fill us with the Holy Spirit, give me the right words to speak in the right way, and may you give me a clarity of mind. For this we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. In the book of uh, Matthew, Chapter 28, we have the Great Commission. And it's common to most of us. But the response to the Great Commission is uncommon. But this is the Great Commission, in case we have forgotten, and it's good to remind ourselves. It says, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 onwards. It says to 20, 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go, and that is our topic, verse 19. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe, all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Before giving the great commission, before sending, before saying go, go is our topic. Go. Before saying go, there is something that is being done, even in athletics. Before it is said that go, they should run. There is some preparation it is set on your marks be ready then you go even Christ himself he doesn't begin by saying go he begins by saying that all power is given unto him in heaven and on earth then with all this power then after understanding who Jesus is then Christ is saying go most of us, while we should respond to the gospel message, we need to go. First of all, we need to understand who is Christ. And today, could there be some who have not understood who Jesus Christ is? There are some who are in sin. Maybe you are the one who is in sin. There's some sin that is holding on to you. Christ is saying, I have the power. I have power to forgive your sins. There is no sin that is above the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood. Wonder working power. Will you be free from sin? The songwriter says, will you be free from sin? Will you or evil a victory? There is power in the blood. Wonder working power. And it is in Christ that we can be forgiven our sins. Christ is saying, come. I have all the power to make you complete, to make you full. Then after that, Christ is saying, go. What are you waiting? First of all, Christ is saying, go to be forgiven your sins. Go to be complete, full, lacking nothing. Go to Christ to receive the power. Go to Christ, the conviction actually comes first. That is the work of the Holy Spirit, convicted of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Once you're convicted of sin, 
there is guilt. And the Bible says, harden not your heart. When you hear such a voice, the Bible is saying, go. Some people after listening to a sermon, after listening to a presentation, they say we have tomorrow. But brother, today, actually now, is the day of your salvation, as the Bible records in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Now is the day of your salvation. Never say tomorrow. Tomorrow we are not sure on to eat. We are not sure about it. Worry not for the morrow. For the morrow shall worry of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, 34. It is today, one day at a time. And God is saying, go. Go to Christ. You are being sent by the Holy Spirit. Go to Christ that you may have forgiveness of your sins. Tarry not, brother. Do not wait any longer. Be faithful. Be firm. Be steadfast. Be quick in your response to the call that is coming onto you today. And this is the call I'm giving. Could it be there's some sins you have? Brother, repent. Could it be you have never given your life unto Christ? I implore unto you today, you may surrender your life unto Christ. You may call the number below in the screen. And then you can give your life unto Christ. Fully surrendered unto Christ. I'll give a story. And it is in the Bible, in the book of Luke chapter 13. Chapter 24 rather, chapter 24, beginning from verse 13 to verse 35. There were two men. One is called Cleopas, and they were walking from Jerusalem. They had gone to celebrate the feast of the Passover. And that weekend was the, the Friday of that weekend, Jesus had been crucified. After finishing celebrating the feast of the, first, the Passover, they were walking back from Jerusalem to their homes. And they were talking together. The two of these two guys, the two of them, these two guys, Cleopas and his friend, speaking on the things that had happened in Jerusalem, especially the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And as they were in their conversation, as they were absorbed in their conversation, then Christ comes in the midst of them, and Christ comes in a manner they could not see him. Actually, their eyes were controlled divinely that they could not see Jesus Christ. And brother, you know, could it be you are in, absorbed in earthly things? You are not taking the heed calling you to surrender yourself unto Jesus, that is saying, go. And you're absorbed in the things of the world. Christ comes into you and asks, what manner of conversation is this? And that is what Jesus asked them. And Jesus tried to explain unto them what had happened because they were worried. Actually, they told Jesus, are you new in this town? Haven't you known that they have crucified him that we thought was the Messiah? Him that we thought could save the Jews from the Roman bondage. That was the expectation which was wrong. Then Christ, beginning from Moses on to all other prophets, expounds the, the scriptures about himself. Yes, brother, the Old Testament speaks about Jesus. Jesus preaches from the Old Testament about him, about the Messiah. And as they were about to reach their home, Christ behaves in a manner that he is going ahead. And these two guys persist. They plead with him to go with them. You know Jesus does not force himself into your life. Jesus knocks at the door. It is you to open. Jesus does not break the door to come into. It took persistent persuasion from these people for Christ to join them. For it was evening. And as they were eating, not they were eating, as the meal came, they were about to start eating. Then their eyes were open and they knew this is the Messiah. And we are reading that in the book of Luke chapter 24 verse 30. And it came to pass, Luke chapter 24, verse, beginning from verse 30. It says, and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and break and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. 
And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked to us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. In fact, once they realized this is Jesus, he is risen. Our hopes of the Messiah are alive again. Once they realized that this is Jesus, brother, they left their meals. They rose up, the Bible says, the same hour. And they went back to the disciples. I will read that story as explained better. In a book that is called Desire of Ages, written by Ellen G. White, actually, the curator of the Library of Congress has ranked this book as the best book on earth on the story of Jesus. You can buy it. You can get it. You can call the number on the screen and they can organize for you a copy of the same book. I'm reading the same book, the book Desire of Ages, page 801. We'll read the whole page. It says... But with this great news to communicate, they cannot sit and talk. Their weariness and hunger are gone. They leave their meal untested and full of joy, immediately set out on the same path by which they came, hurrying to tell the tidings to the disciples in the city. Their weariness is over. You think you are tired. You think you are too much old. You think you don't have money to go out. To reach to a brother, to help a brother who is in need, to preach to a brother. The Bible is saying, or we, they went out immediately. Our weariness, our anger was over. Brother, don't see how weak you are. Don't see how sinful you are. Christ does not call the qualified, as they say. He qualifies the called. And this call is coming on to you. Go. They went immediately. The story continues by saying, In the same paths, the road is not safe, but they climb over the steep places, sleeping on the smooth rocks. They do not see, they do not know that they have the protection of him who has traveled the road with them. It was at night. They are not afraid of the, the darkness. It was at night, but they go the same way they had come. Come to Jesus today. Don't fear that someone will say something about you. This is your call. Be it at night. Go, do not fear. These guys, they need fear. They went at night to the Messiah. They went to tell the disciples of the Messiah that he is risen. The Bible tells us, with their pilgrim staff in hand, they press on, desiring to go faster than they dare. For a Christian, this is our pilgrim staff. And as we go, we should go with the Bible. As you come to Christ, you should come on the basis of truth. Not emotions, not feelings, not culture. You don't worship, what your you don't worship because your fathers worshipped this kind of religion or faith. No. You worship because it's truth. This is what you follow. We continue. It says that uh, they had their pilgrim staff in hand. They press on to go faster than they dare. They lose their track, but find it again. At times we fall, but the Bible is saying find it again. Even in church, at times we are absorbed into the politics of the church. We point fingers who is doing better than the other. We point fingers at times even our leaders will fail. You are losing your track, but find it again. Find it again. There is a promise to find it again. Sometimes running, sometimes stumbling. They press forward. Their unseen companion close beside them all the way. This was the promise. Lo, I am with you always. On to the end of the world. Go, brother. Go. This is the message. The night is dark, but the sun of righteousness is shining upon them. Their hearts leap for joy. They seem to be in a new world. Christ is a living Savior. They no longer mourn him as dead. Christ is risen over and over again. They repeat it. These two men, they went forward immediately. Brother, what are you waiting? 
The call comes to you today. Either you have not been saved. Either you have not given your life unto Christ. The call is yours to come today. Never say tomorrow. This is your hour. This is your time. Surrender your life unto Christ. We like procrastinating even in our activities, even in our financial life. You say one day I will buy this thing. One day I will pray. One day I will do something. But today this is your time. The Bible is saying go. Go ye therefore. They went. Either you have not given your life unto Christ or you have given already your life unto Christ. Then the message comes unto you. Go and reach on to others. Go share the message. Do not be afraid. Carry your Bible. Actually, we should even be walking with a pocket Bible. That while we are waiting for some activity, the time should be spent in reading the Bible, memorizing scripture. And this is what we are told today, to go immediately. And all has been given. All is sufficient for us. Even if it's at night, Christ, the son of righteousness, as was with Cleopas and his friend, he will be with us today. And we are told his biddings are enablings. Now is the time. Do not add in your heart. As the Bible says in Hebrews, we may read, we may read that. Hebrews chapter, say, chapter 3 rather. Hebrews chapter 3. We are reading verse 7 and 8. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. Do not harden your heart today. The Bible is saying, Go, now is your time. Do not hesitate. And by the way, if you linger, if you say that they have another chance, your heart is hardened. It is easier for you to accept the call the first time than the second time, than the third time. And it will worsen like that until you become an infidel hardwood. And it will be very difficult for you to heed to the call. Once you have heard the call, the conviction that this is truth, this is the Messiah, give your life fully complete unto Jesus today. And if you're a Christian, you have heard the call to support mission work by your finances, by your time, by your talents. The Bible is saying, go. As these men arose immediately, at times we check if we have money, we check if we have uh, uh, food, we check if everything is okay. While that is good, in planning for all should be done in order. For our God is a God of order. The question is, have you decided to go? Are you ready to go? When you are ready to go, then providence comes. Then Christ provides his ways for you to go and do his work. These men, they didn't fear anything. Cleopas and his friend, they went immediately. May we go today. As we go, may we be faithful. For he has promised to be faithful to us. Thank you for listening and may God bless you as we pray to finish. Lord, for so long we have heard this call. For so long we have been told to go. But today, Lord, we pray that we may linger no longer, that we may not harden our hearts anymore, that we may fully give ourselves unto you, to be to, ready to spend and be spent for you and for your kingdom. May we surrender fully our families, ourselves, our sins unto you. May we surrender fully our talents to the exchanger who is Jesus Christ to be used for his service. Answer our prayers according to your will. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.